Our next caller is Will from Tennessee. Hey, what's up, Will? How can we what's help up, you? Will. Hey, fellas. How are you? Good, man. Good, man. Uh, I'd like to say thank you. I appreciate uh, what you do. Your uh, platform, your information is amazing. Um, I actually got uh, hooked on your podcast. Uh, well, you were on the Order of Man podcast, and and uh, that's where I kind of got on to you. Awesome. But uh, um, anyways, just had to give a shout out to, to Ryan Mickler over there. Um, Great guy. Yeah. My question is, uh, really my goals, I've got a five-year-old son. I want to be um, as strong and as agile for him as possible. Uh, I've been listening to you. I've got a three day a week, full body routine going, um, pretty consistent. Haven't worked in any trigger sessions yet. Um, at the moment I'm, I'm building a deadlift platform, um, for my, for my home. And I guess my question to you is, is there any benefit in making it possible to do deficit deadlifts on that platform. Yeah, there, there's, you know, there's, there's some good value in deficit deadlifts, especially if your sticking point is at the bottom of a deadlift. Now, one caveat is you need to have the, re- the mobility mm-hmm. and the technique to do it because if you're tight and your ankle mobility isn't that great or you start to round your back just to be able to go down low enough to do a deficit deadlift, you're, you're increasing your risk of injury quite a bit. There's also another way of doing these. So one way is to stand on a platform. It allows you to still use the 45, especially if you're real strong, you can still stack the 45s on your side. If you're not lifting more than you know a couple hundred pounds on a de- deficit deadlift, you could also just put 35s on it or 25s, and now it's just lower to the floor, and you don't need to stand um, on anything in order to elevate yourself. But if you're using the big plates, obviously you know you don't want to put you know you can't fit 15 25s on your side then I would, I would use a platform. And the way that I would program it is I would do my, you know, my normal workouts. And if you have the prerequisite mo- mo- uh, mobility, then one workout, I would focus on deficit deads. And then maybe at the end of the workout, I would do a couple sets of traditional, you know, off the floor type deadlifts. To be clear though, I mean, based off of what you kind of said real quick, and I don't know, I don't know how deep we can get into your goals, but I mean, if, if it's more about being a dad and, and being strong and being mobile, um, you're not missing a tremendous, if you're not, I mean, you could do without them, right? Yeah, exactly. In fact, I, I would love to see you doing like a, a maps performance type of program. I mean, it sounds like your goals are really similar to kind of where my goals are in my life right now. I really don't care about being the buffest dude right now or getting on stage or anything crazy like that. Uh, I really want to be able to keep up with my son. I want to be strong. I want to be able to get down and squat in the squatted position and play with him and not feel like my back's on fire or my knees are killing me. And uh, so if if you align with that, then actually like a, a MAPS performance type of program where you got good strength training, foundational days, three days a week, and then you're working on a lot of your mobility, um, I think you'll get the, the biggest bang from your body. And that doesn't mean that you I wouldn't have you also deadlift and then follow like an anabolic program, but I think... Well, we put deadlifts in performance too, especially yeah, in phase one. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's in there. And I do think there's value in deficit deadlifts, but just, you know, use it as like a completely different exercise. So this is something like you want to reduce the weight substantially until you feel like you really have control over yeah. that at the bottom part because and, and two this is going to help with those functional goals as well because you are going to be in positions where you're bending over substantially and you know it's going to help to give you like strength where you need it uh, in compromising type positions which is ideal uh, but to Adam's point you know in terms of like a lot of more different uh, relatable translatable kind of functional moves like you're going to get that in performance uh, you know a, a bit more yeah you, you know Will I, I, I know there's a lot of like uh, specific strength athletes like power lifters that really they relatively regularly program deficit deadlifts into their their programs and remember these are power lifters and the goal is to get as strong as possible in three uh, lifts. Now, if you're just looking for overall strength and muscle um, and balance, because powerlifting can be sometimes, oftentimes a very unbalanced sport. It's all in you know one plane, right? Um, then, you know, deficit deads, like I, I'll personally, I do deficit deadlifts, you know, maybe a few times a year. And to give you an idea of how much weight I'll use on it, if I'm doing singles with 500 or 520 pounds, I'm not going above 300 pounds Mm -hmm. on a deficit dead. So what Justin said is 100% accurate. It's, it's, you're, you're treating it like range of motion, staying connected, not necessarily like your deadlift where you're, you're pushing the weight. Very similar to if your goal is to get more depth in your squat. 
right? And and I think that's a that's a valuable goal to have uh, because it does set you up for success when you're in those types of positions to generate force and strength, you know, in in some of those more difficult positions. So uh, I find value in deficit deadlift. I find value in you know really getting depth in your squat. Just make sure you're really you know treating them uh, with respect and 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 you know lightening the load substantially. Yeah, the the key really is to to, to take care of all the prerequisites first before you do that, not the other way around, right? So I, that's a great uh, example. Justin is it, mm-hmm. it's just like the pursuit of getting a deeper squat but the way like I got a deeper squat was working on my ankle, ankle and hip mobility, mobility first right. and then I would cha- that challenge my range of motion with lighter weight okay good I'm getting a little bit deeper in my squat go back a lot of focus on mobility test it again on deeper squat that's kind of how I would handle these deficit deads is I would apply the mobility work that we have in performance Every once in a while on your deadlift day, decide to do them light and on deficit dead to see how your form is and how it feels Mm -hmm. and to keep challenging it like that and use it, use it more as a gauge of, am I getting better range of motion in my deadlifts than it is like, you know, trying to really do it. Like you see the power lifters doing it. You have totally different goals and I'm, I'm with Sal. I mean, I haven't done deficit deadlifts in probably three or four years. So and I when I was doing it, it was purely because I just I was trying to get a stronger deadlift. I wanted to get my numbers up. Um, I had different goals back then. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. If if you don't have mass performance, by the way, we'll send that over to you, Will. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. No problem. Thanks for listening to the show. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, fellas. I appreciate your input and your honesty, and uh, love what you're doing. Thank you. You awesome. got it. Cool. Thanks, Will. Yeah, I think this highlights something important about advanced. Uh, variations in lifts or advanced techniques like bands and chains and partial reps and negatives and mm-hmm. deficit lifts and floor presses and all valuable. Okay, I want to be very clear. All valuable, all could provide value, improve your, stre- your strength, your mobility, but the, they're not the bread and butter. They really are not the bread and butter. And many of them require lots of preparation before you go and attempt them. And I, I've seen way too many times somebody go and, for example, try to do deficit deadlifts and I watch their form. Back is rounding. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, you, you, yeah. not only is that not good technique, but you probably should be practicing with no weight because that four-inch difference it doesn't seem like much, but it is, especially if you always train in one particular range of motion. I think I think where this happens or where people, like why this becomes a, a good question or why we get asked this question is you you – are wanting to get stronger in your deadlift and you come across someone's page. Some and of these videos inspires yeah, totally. And exactly, yeah. and they're touting how totally. great de- deficit deadlifts. And you're like, oh, well, I want to get good at deadlifts. And so, and if this has helped this person mm-hmm. out and they're qualified, smart, whatever, or really strong, uh, should I do it? And it's like, you know, you can get a really strong deadlift and do other things that are more valuable to your specific goals uh, without having to do that too. I right. think that's the, the misconception is that, Oh, well, I should do that too. Well, it really depends. And if he was a client of mine, I'd really want to dive into like his goals. Like when he mentioned that about his son and like, okay, you want to get stronger in your deadlift. We can work on that. No Mm -hmm. problem. And we can never do deficit deads and be fine with that. You also want to be mobile and you want to be able to play with your son. That's another major goal of yours. Okay. Well, let's work on mobility and that be the primary focus. We'll get stronger in your deadlift along the way. We'll also get to a place where you Mm -hmm. comfortably can do deficit deadlifts. I really like what Justin said about treating it like a new exercise. If you train in this 12-inch range of motion and that's how you constantly get stronger and stronger and stronger, there's some carryover to outside of that range of motion. But but the more you move outside that range of motion, the faster it diminishes to the point where a lot of that strength means almost nothing. In fact- Unfamiliar territory. In fact, I'll tell you what, I've trained a lot of runners who have decent stability and stamina, right, in that running range of motion. You bring them below that and they completely fall apart- because they never train in that range of motion. This will happen to you too when you resistance train. If you train at and you squat to parallel and you've built up a really good squat and you've moved up to 400 pounds or whatever and you're doing great and then you think, you know what, I'm going to try going four inches lower. Mm -hmm. So let me lighten the load. Let me go 50 pounds down from my normal weight because 50 pounds is a lot. Not nearly enough of a cut in weight. Uh, No joke. I would go down, you know, 70% and focus on connecting because the risk of injury goes up so much because you are now training in a range of motion that you really never train in. Yeah, and, and to make sure you have that range of motion and go through the mobility of that first, obviously, is a prerequisite. It's important. I would even like probably prioritize unilateral training before I would even Good go point. to the deficit deadlift. Oh, so yeah. 
if he was the focus single more leg on that, deadlift off the floor, right? Because I mean, most of the issues of strength is is instability, mm -hmm. uh, and so to to be able to kind of reinforce that by adding just like unilateral focus, I think would go much further. I 100% agree, and that's what I mean. I feel like there's a, a for his goals. What there's he's really way, trying there's to, other stuff that's there's more many things that yeah. he could be doing that he, not only will he get good at his desired outcome of increasing his deadlift strength and and mobility that are going to benefit him a lot more than just doing de deficit deads. Totally. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.